Yo everyone, I am a fool. I thought I could cover everything about 14.0 in one simple little video right before it all went down on that fateful Saturday evening. I was dead wrong. In this video, I'm going to rectify that and show the things I forgot about, as well as things that have been slowly added over the Patreon beta, just in time for the public beta release that's just happened. Ready? Let's go. Let's do a quick lightning round of all the important stuff I missed in my previous video. The exit on surface now has a door to prevent more effective camping. There's been new loading screens added, including one for starting the game up. Yes, there are now toilets in Heavy Containment Zone, but some more have also been opened in Light Containment Zone. Entrance Zone got some cool new stuff like new props, new hallway variants, and no more blue. HCZ has a lot more unique layouts now. There are new decals for shooting various surfaces, like glass for example. Server Room has been just straight up removed, but they did state that it will be redesigned in a following update. And there's now screen space reflections. There, Mel and I said it. Alright, time for the stuff that's been updated since last we saw them. The Particle Disruptor has gotten some pretty huge changes, helping its effect Instead of the firing mode being based on aiming, you can now change it manually by hitting the same button for cocking the revolver, which by default is middle mouse button. The accuracy for hip firing and running with it has been increased, hopefully allowing you to hit your shots a bit better. The disruptor's scope has gotten some changes, including indication on what firing mode you're on, and a target tracker system, which will essentially show a roll colored icon in the middle of another player as long as they're at a distance and clearly in sight. Burst fire now deals 250 damage from 200. Disintegrator mode, aka the Big Shot mode now deals 800 damage from 500, but the Hume Shield penetration is now halved instead of full. Disintegrator mode also fires 0.5 seconds faster and has an increased radius for the shot, allowing you to get hits uh, more easier on close shots. Speaking of the Particle Disruptor, let's take a quick look at where it and the Jailbird spawns now. The Experimental Weapon Lockers. There's not much to be said about these things as they're pretty simple in design. They'll spawn in the usual locations for SCP lockers, one to two of them can spawn in a game, and they require Armory Access 3 to open, so either Captain, Chaos, or O5 cards are necessary. SCP-106 and 939 have gotten some surprise changes, making 106 a powerhouse for hunting you down, and 939, um is good too. I don't know, it felt about the same honestly, but it's still cool I guess. 106 had his max Hume Shield increase to 700 from 600, but here's the real cool changes. Submerging now takes 2 seconds, and Emerging takes a whole 1 second, and on top of that, you'll get a 20% speed boost for 5 seconds after emerging from Hunter's Atlas or Stalk. I don't know what Northwood was smoking when making this change, but it's honestly pretty based. Sadly, it seems like they're already wanting to dial this back, which is a real shame because I think it makes them feel amazing to play and genuinely scary to go against. And finally, the minimum amount of power to use stock was increased to 35%. As for 939, she got some pretty simple tweaks. Her sprint speed was reduced to 6.4 meters a second from 6.8, but stamina now lasts 10% longer. And also, players who have been directly seen by 939 will stay revealed for 0.5 seconds longer. Now onto the biggest thing that's been added since the last video, Nuke Room's rework. Now, admittedly, this this version of it is very early and it has some rough edges, but even still, it plays and looks pretty good. Let's cover it from top to bottom, literally. Firstly, the hallway outside the room is now a T-section instead of a straight hallway. This is so it's not as easy to hold it up from all angles, which as you'll see is a common theme with this new nuke room. Secondly, the elevators, yes, plural, have gotten some changes to how they look and work. This new elevator is way more open, allowing you to shoot and send grenades through, jump on top of the elevators, and even allowing you to jump all the way down the shaft, if you're an SCP or have anti-cola handy. Let's cover what's at the bottom of the elevator. Upon leaving the elevator, you have a few ways you can go. One way will lead you to the armory, which will have the usual 3x3 locker or rifle locker. The other way will lead you to the nuke room's main hall. Going in, there's a big firing chamber in the middle that can be jumped on, but it's not confirmed if it'll stay this way. Behind it, there's the control panel that's a bit larger than usual. Also, you can jump into the pit now, this killing you instantly. There is a side area to the nuke room as well, right outside one of the elevators, called the vents. These vents allow you to sneakily make your way above the main chamber of the nuke room to try and catch a camper off guard, either alone or coordinated with buddies. And finally, we have some miscellaneous stuff that we should go over, like rifles getting their recoil reduced by quite a bit, some new lore added in Project Segmentum's room, in 1344's container, and in a Class D cell, a new option for main menu music, that being the achromatic abatement theme, a digital sign above 173-049's containment entrance, and the bulkhead doors have gotten new sounds.
there you have it. That should be everything I missed in my last video on Heavy Duty. Like I said at the start, the public beta should be out now, and you can catch me streaming it on my Twitch if you're watching this shortly after it's been posted. Have a nice day, everyone.